calories in and calories out versus keto. Are these two positions diametrically opposed? The last few years we've seen what is, in my opinion, a pretty obnoxious and pointless argument where both sides make some ridiculous claims in this whole calories out versus calories in versus calories out versus the calories don't matter crowd. So the calories in versus calories out camp holds that what is important for weight loss is a caloric deficit. Right? And this is sort of a truism. Right? In order to lose weight, you must be in a deficit. How do you know when you're in a deficit? Well, you're losing weight. Right? So not a single one of us knows what exactly our, me our metabolic rate is on any given day. We don't know exactly how many calories we are burning each day, unless we're in a bomb calorimeter where they shut you up in a ward in a metabolic room, in a metabolic ward rather, in a room, and measure the heat output of your body throughout the entire day. So not a single one of us knows exactly how many calories we are burning every day. But of course, through adjusting the amount of food we eat, people get results with fat loss. Now when you just give people the advice, restrict your calories, eat less, move more. For a few people, that can be decent advice. Right? Some people are able to intentionally exercise a little bit more and restrict their food intake and they can lose some weight. For a vast majority of people, this has been some of the shittiest advice ever given. Eat less, move more, restrict your calories. Right? Not every single calorie is treated the same in the body. A thousand calories worth of a ribeye steak is going to obviously be treated much differently than a, uh, a pound of white sugar mixed with uh, some margarine. Right? Our bodies react different to different types of calories. There are three macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. Protein is treated much differently than carbohydrate and fat. The hormonal response to carbohydrate and fat is different as well. So our body is able to effectively burn either glucose or fat as a fuel. When you restrict glucose, when you restrict carbohydrate intake, you get into a state of ketosis. That simply means that you're breaking down fats and burning those fats. Those fats can come from your body or from the plate. Now the calories in, calories out crew, to be fair, most of them actually have a deeper understanding of the hormonal responses to food. They understand that protein is a very important macro for satiety. Yet they still hold to their dogma, which is the best advice is just telling people to restrict their calories and finding ways to get them to restrict their calories. And this is true. Whether you're on a ketogenic diet or an if it fits your microwave or if it fits your mouth diet, in both diets, in order to lose weight, you technically have to be in a deficit. Now, a ketogenic diet allows you to manage your hormones, to manage blood glucose levels, and leverages that ketogenic state in order to minimize hunger. All right, we're gonna have different hunger responses to a Krispy Kreme donut or bacon and eggs, right? People find that when they fill up on meat, then it's much less desirable to eat the sweets. This is one of the reasons why a carnivorous diet is so popular these days. A carnivore diet gives people simple rules that ends up giving them sufficient amounts of protein and fat. So they'll either be in a ketotic state or a mildly ketotic state or just almost on the borderline of ketosis, depending on the person and their hunger will be naturally managed and they will eat less. They're pulling out all the trigger foods that hormonally and emotionally and psychologically we want to just cling on to, right? A lot of us use ice cream, cookies, junk food in order to regulate brain chemistry. A ketogenic diet will shift your neurochemistry towards the production of GABA rather than pr the production of glutamate. GABA is a very inhibitory, soothing neurotransmitter. Glutamate being very excitatory. So a ketogenic state actually leverages hormonal signaling, hunger signaling, and neurological changes in order to reduce hunger and make it much easier to maintain a calorie deficit. So people on a ketogenic diet, most of us naturally end up not eating very much food. Now simplifying that even further, a lot of people are getting very, very interested in carnivorous eating. A carnivorous keto diet is something that I gravitate towards. After over five years on a ketogenic diet, I have found myself gradually having to admit to myself 
that I don't need the vegetables, right? I was raised believing that the vegetables were good. You gotta balance out the meat intake with the vegetables. In fact, for two years, I tried to use a vegan diet that was totally free of animal foods. It failed miserably and ended up harming my health and the health of my daughter, but I tried. What I've had to come to admit is that the plants not only are not necessary, but as I've seen with so many clients, many of these types of plant foods can be detrimental to some people. Right? I've seen a lot of people benefit from reducing oxalate intake in the diet. You see a lot of people benefit from removing other food groups from the diet. A lot of people do much better without dairy. That doesn't mean everybody's got to remove oxalates from the diet. Everybody's got to remove dairy from the diet. Everybody's got to avoid plants. I should understand that there are many of us out there eating a diet based on animal foods and doing better than ever. So anyways, a carnivorous style approach actually simplifies the rules for a lot of people. People aren't having to be concerned with making vegetables. A lot of these carnivore diet folk are just eating straight up grocery store meat. They're not even concerning themselves with grass fed. You know, I promote grass fed beef for reasons other than just taste, right? Uh, where I live in a rural area uh, in the mountains of Ecuador, I don't want to see the factory farming system pushed in here. I don't want to see the wheat, corn, and soy destroy the economy of these local producers here and bring the environmental devastation, the soil erosion, and the destruction of our topsoil and the chelation of our soil with all the pesticide use that comes with introducing a lot of the grain-fed animal agriculture. So I promote grass-fed, but many people are doing well just eating the normal grain-finished beef from Costco. So anyways, these people aren't counting calories. These people aren't even concerning themselves, many of them, with how much they're eating. But their satiety and their hung hunger signaling is naturally inducing a state where they're just not eating as much. And they're burning loads of body fat and feeling fantastic. So there are many ways of going about fat loss. Calories in versus calories out, that may work for a few people. But in my opinion, it's pretty shitty advice for the average person. Getting someone on a diet that they can maintain long term and enjoy long term and allow them to have stable blood glucose, low insulin levels, decreased inflammation, and thus lower hunger and stable energy levels throughout the day is the best way to go about it in my opinion. So that's why we've been teaching people to use a low carbohydrate diet based around mostly whole unrefined foods, fats and proteins that come from animals, right? Protein comes from some that has eyes or a shell. Not from a freaking powder, not from Memphis meats, not some soylent slop in a plastic aluminum sealed bag, right? Real whole unrefined foods learning to prepare your own foods, right? Which is why we made our Ketogenic Edge cookbook, the training manual for low carb ketogenic and paleo cuisine. We call it the training manual because that's what we intend to do with it, to train people how to actually prepare their own keto foods. When we started a low carb diet, we had no idea what we were doing. I mean, we had come upon uh, the works of Weston Price, uh, of some of these low carb proponents in the uh, around 2012, 2013. It wasn't as popular back then. And we were coming out of a more plant based diet. Right? We were eating a lot of plants. But when we left, the inanity of a vegan diet, it was actually kind of difficult to prepare food at first. So we made the book as essentially what we wished we had when we first started a low carbohydrate diet. And, um, and it's really, really helpful for actually creating a foundation of food prep habits that you can maintain and enjoy long term. Because that's crucial. Yeah, calories matter. But every calorie is not the same. Certain macronutrients, one macronutrient, protein, is going to be more important than any of the other macros for inducing satiety. Right? Carbohydrate and fat, different people have different tolerances for their ability to use carbs on a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet, the stability of blood glucose, the stability and the lowering of insulin levels, and the ability to generate energy throughout the day constantly makes it very easy to maintain long term. And of course, you're able to eat freaking steak for breakfast. You're able to eat bacon and eggs regularly. If you can handle dairy, 
you're able to eat delicious cheeses on the regular. So, so many people enjoy this because it's easy to maintain long term. I can wake up any day and eat steak and eggs and be so stoked. Right? I love salty, fatty foods. And I get to eat them regularly and my body functions and feels better than it ever has. So yeah, calories matter. But not all calories are the same. And telling somebody, hey, just decrease the amount of food you eat and go move more is shitty advice. People who restrict calories a bunch often don't prioritize protein, often aren't getting sufficient micronutrients that they'll require for performance, and end up restricting movement as well. Right? When you lower the caloric intake and the body has less energy, you will naturally downregulate your output of energy in order to conserve it. The body doesn't want to lose that fat. What's cool about keto is you've saved that fat and stored it for a rainy day. When you remove the carbohydrate, you lower the insulin levels, that allows you to consistently tap into that body fat and do it seamlessly and painlessly. So, ketogenic diet, not magic, doesn't negate the effects of excess food intake, doesn't mean that calories don't matter just because people end up eating less without counting calories. A ketogenic diet, one of the most powerful tools for fat loss, but it's not magic. And you've got to do it right. So do a ketogenic diet based around whole foods, get sufficient protein, quit restricting the protein and being afraid of the most important, uh, the most important macronutrient. And keep it simple. So many of us are overcomplicating these things, consciously or unconsciously, and making it harder on ourselves to get the progress we, we need and we want. So take it one step at a time. For some people, that first step might be just be cutting out the sugar, the brain, or the, the grains, the bread, you know, the wheat, the corn, the soy. Take it one step at a time and build a foundation of habits that you can enjoy and maintain long term and you'll keep the weight off, you'll keep the fat off, and you'll maintain the metabolic benefits that you're getting long term. So that's it. You can find more at PrimalEdgeHealth.com. Uh, if you're interested in coaching, we will be doing private consultations this month, but only it's going to be limited because we're doing our Keto Collective, our Keto and Carnivore Collective for November. Just started the other day. The December Keto and Carnivore Collective is open now for enrollment. Um, you can sign up for that now. It's our group community coaching where we use a Discord server. We do several live interactive lessons and voice chats per week. Uh, you have full access to us and you have full access to a community of like-minded people who are here to support and enjoy this ride together. So each month we have a new group and it's been really, really fun. It's a great way of doing coaching. We're able to give you more time, more energy, more content, and much more support. So you can check that out in the link in the description. And check out my wife's book, The Ketogenic Edge Cookbook, for creating a solid foundation of habits of food prep if we want to be self-sustained on the diet and make it last, we can't be eating out every meal. We've got to understand how to make our own foods. And it's really not that hard. So the whole book's based on whole unrefined foods, right? There's no, um, there's no junk foods. There's not even any artificial sweeteners in the book. And it's actually got a whole section on how to prepare the most nutrient-dense parts of the animal called the odd bits section, where we teach you how to make things like bone broth and how to prepare organs like liver and heart. Right? I mean, a little tip for people trying to increase nutrient density of the diet and get a little bit of variety in there, including ground heart with ground beef, is delicious and adds so much nutrition. A heart's one of the best sources of coenzyme Q10 in the world. All right? Liver, one of the most nutrient dense foods ever. Probably the most nutrient dense food in the world, bar none. So we teach you how to prepare these foods, how to make them delicious. And uh, yeah, anyways, keep it simple. Calories matter. Saying calories don't matter makes you lose all credibility, but also saying that calories matter and that all calories are the same makes you even dumber. <laughs> you can find more at PrimalEdgeHealth.com. Get off the computer, close your damn Facebook account, get out there in the real world and live your life.